You know, I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe in accidents. I don't believe you're here by chance. I choose to believe you're here today because it was the will of the Lord for you to be here. Amen? Amen. And I want you to add your faith to my faith that something is going to be said or done that's going to add value to your life. Yes. Will you agree with that? Yes. Grab hands with the person next to you all across the aisles. Father, we thank you today for your presence. We thank you for the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, that you said where two or three are gathered together in your name. There will you be in the midst of them. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Move up and down every aisle. I thank you, Father, that as I decrease, you'll increase. I pray less of me and more of you, none of me and all of you. Think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Father, those things that you would have me to say to these your sheep. I thank you, Lord, you've anointed them with ears to hear, hearts to receive, and a spirit to contain your word. And it's in the mighty, holy, all-knowing, all-powerful name of Jesus that I pray. I thank you, Lord. No one under the sound of my voice will sit here in discomfort or pain. Father, you said you sent your word and it healed them. So, Lord, I thank you that as the word goes forth today, healing and deliverance will take place by the power of your word. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus that I pray and let all that agree. He shall amen. amen. Shout amen again. Amen. Well, give a good looking person a big old hug. They're real close. They're right next to you. <laughs> Glory to God. We sent all the ugly folk to Kansas. <laughs> Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. And we've been talking about grace. Amen. Amen. Today, I, I, I'm telling you, man, I am so excited. Because today we're going to talk about how you can get that grace working in your life. You know, it's one thing to know that something's available to you. It's a whole nother thing to know how to gain access to it. It's one thing to know that something is good for you. But it's a whole nother thing to know that, man, I, I, can, I can access it for myself. So in the book of Ephesians, we're going to start there. And uh, today, hopefully, prayerfully, at the conclusion of the word, I know my desire and the Holy Spirit's desire is that you come to the end of you. Amen. Now, it's very simple uh, what it is that God wants you and I to receive today and how he wants us to to appropriate this message of grace in our life is what we're really going to focus in on. And once you get it, or not even get it, once you receive it, Amen. you know what's going to happen? You're going to be free. I mean, really free. In the book of Ephesians, chapter one, chapter two, I'm sorry. He said, and I'm going to read from the Amplified. He said, and you, he made alive. You know, most of us didn't know we were dead till we, after we got saved. You know, why do you think they call it born again? You were, you were alive at some point. Then sin brought death. Jesus delivered us from the penalty of sin, which is death. And now we're alive again. You wouldn't need to be born again unless you died somewhere back there. Even though you thought you were living, you were really the walking dead. Amen. He said, you who he made alive, who did this? Did you do it? No, he did. When you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sin, in which at one time you walked habitually, 
You were following, watch this now, this is all of us. You were following the course and fashion of this world. I mean, we were just doing what we saw others do. We were doing what we saw on television. We were doing what our brothers and sisters and friends and co-workers and other family members did. We were just, just, just doing what other people in the world did. All of us. Look at your neighbor and say, you too. You too. We yeah, sitting up in here like you all holy and ain't never been nowhere, done nothing. Now we're going to get it straight today. He said, now watch this. We were under the sway of the tendencies of this present age. Now that's important. He said, now people, you know, usually they're not really that far off. They're just off because of sway or tendencies. Just kind of, you know, just a little off. Look at your neighbor say, you know, even if you're a little off, you're still off. <laughs> and that's, that's really, when it comes to, to, to us receiving the grace of God, which is complete, it's not kind of good, it's all good. It's not based on you at all, although you want to make it about you and what you do, even though it's free. I mean, can you imagine what you would really, let me put it this way. How many of you know if something is a gift, a true gift doesn't cost you anything? True gift, a free gift. Everybody say free gift. Free gift. So it can't be a free gift if you get to keep it if you have to do this. So if it's free, it's free. And we don't even know how to receive free. That's our problem. That's at the root of the problem is we really, really, because of how we've been conditioned by the world, how, the way we think in the world, we really don't know how to receive free. Let me show you how you think. I know, come on, man. You know how you don't know how I think. I don't even know you. You don't even know me. Yeah, but I know how the world works. Amen. Been in it all my life. Somebody come up to you that you never met and says, hey, I have this hundred thousand dollars for you. It's yours. Will you receive it? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. First thought in your mind is, what's up? That's the truth. <laughs> what, 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 what I got to do for this? Where'd you get this hundred thousand? Is this mob money, drug money? What's up? That's what you're going to think. Am I, did, I, did, I, did I go too far with a hundred thousand? It ain't even got to be that much. Somebody just walk up to you with a hundred dollars. With a hundo, one hundred dollars. And say, hey. Now, now, they could even use our terminology or God's terminology. Hey, the Lord put on my heart to bless you with this. Here you go. Yeah. Now, let's say before you get sa got saved and somebody walked up to you with $100 and say, the Lord told me to bless you with this. You know, you still will resist just receiving it. Yeah. But, you know, now that you've been saved and you've been hearing, you know, you've been expecting people to bless you, right? It's the year of unprecedented favor. You expecting people to bless you, right? Amen. Amen. Well, why did you cap it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, there's probably nobody in this room that have heard a message of, of, of total life prosperity or, or financial prosperity that would resist. Matter of fact, you looking for somebody to give you something. Amen. That's your expectation. And give it to you freely because you, you're a tither. You, 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 you sow seeds in obedience to God. You expecting, right? If somebody gave you $100, you, you wouldn't even freak about that. You'd just say, oh, yeah, that's, that's good. That's, that's my harvest coming in, finally. That's, that's some of that coming on that Ephesian, uh, no, that Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 1 wave. Amen. That's what you'll be thinking. 
But now grace is free. And we're, we're struggling with this. You're still trying to work it out. You're still trying to figure it out. You, you just, it's just, you're struggling with it. So we're going to take the struggle out of it today. Amen. Amen. Look at David. We're going to take the struggle out today. So <clears throat> he says, we were under the sway of the tendencies of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. I mean, you know, kings don't follow princes. Amen. He said, you are obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. The careless, the rebellious, the unbelieving who go against the purposes of God. Now that, that all exists. And we were all a part of that. Till we got born again. But that's not the end, that's the beginning. Amongst these, we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves in the passions of our flesh. Isn't that right? Yes, our behavior governed by our corrupt and sensual nature. It's true too, right? Obeying the impulses. How many of you ever did something out of impulse? You just, you know, and let, me, let me use something that you're familiar with. You ever stood in line at Publix uh, or at any, any grocery store between all the impulse junk? I mean, you went in there to get milk and bread. You were, you were able to navigate the ice cream aisle, the bacon aisle, the soda aisle. And I mean, you're doing good. You're standing at the counter. You know, the four items, six items or less. You, you've done well. You, didn't, you, didn't, you weren't tempted by the basket they gave you to roll or the little one they gave you to tote, right? You, you were doing good. And then you get right there at the counter in between the impulse items. This is not stuff you need. This is not stuff you go into a grocery store to ever buy. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But you can't help yourself. <laughs> you just got to get a snicker. You, you just, you just got to get two packs of gum. You, right? That's all impulse stuff. That's, right? We've all done it. Well, well he says there, there are things that just by nature, and because it's the, it's, the, it's the way things work in this world, that we learn, learn to do by impulse. We need help with those impulses. You, by yourself, can't turn off what you do by impulse. You need help. Amen. Help greater than you. Yeah. Amen. Think about it. You bought it and you didn't even want it. Right. Some people have done that with cars. Right? Been to a dealership. You wanted a red two-door sports car left there with a black four-door station wagon. <laughs> In other words, you met a salesman and they sold you what was most profitable to them for you to buy versus what you really wanted. And they made it make sense to you. That's impulse, okay? You've done a lot of stuff by impulse. Obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. And there's two types of imagination. It could be dark or it can be great. It could be light. What do you mean, Pastor? You could you can imagine negative things, or you can imagine godly things. You can imagine positive things, right? Now, we all know 
that it works in the negative, you've done it before. Everybody in here, there's probably nobody in here that hadn't faced the situation, looked at it, imagined it going bad, and it went bad. That's, that's an impulse. That's, that's something that's, well, actually, we know. That's you submitting and catering more to your flesh than to the Spirit of God. Now, the Bible says they that are the sons of God are led by what? Spirit, Spirit of God. How many of you know it wasn't the Spirit of God that led you to get three Snickers? <laughs> That's why you don't need to go to like Costco and, you know, some of them places where you go in there with an impulse, under, under the influence of, of an impulsive spirit, you got toilet tissue for the neighborhood. <laughs> Don't nobody else need to go to the store to get toilet tissue for a year. <laughs> well, it was on sale. You got to go buy a freezer for all the stuff you bought impulsively. Some of y'all have storage units for the stuff you bought impulsively. You got more stuff than your current place of living can contain. So you got to buy extra space. Closets. Why you need the other closets in the other rooms? And they all full of stuff. Impulse. You weren't led by the Spirit of God. You were led by something else. Impulses. You imagine that you need things that you don't need. And why is this? You also imagine you need things that you already have. And that's what grace is. Grace, grace very clearly, the Bible, and I'm going to read it to you, but it very clearly says that there are things that we already have, then why you keep asking for it? How, how, how come you're not content believing and accepting that if God says you have it, you really have it? Because we don't believe it till we see it. But this is where grace and faith has to come together. Listen to what he says in the next verse. Now we'd be in pretty bad shape except for verse 4. And uh, verse four and starting that first little word, but, but God, so rich in his mercy. Now, mercy is great. Mercy is what you get when you got it jacked up. It was all, you messed it up. You intentionally messed it up. Matter of fact, you said you weren't going to mess it up again, but you did. You need mercy. Look at your neighbor and say, you need mercy. <laughs> but God has provided mercy. <laughs> Why? Because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love with which he loved us. Okay. Here's the game changer for all of us. Here's the game changer for me. Where, when do we finally decide that if grace can't be earned, we can't work for it. We don't really qualify for it. All we can do is receive it. When do we really act like we've received it? It's when we appropriate it by faith. Faith is a very important component of our ability to even comprehend his grace. You know what I'm going to do? <clears throat> I'm going to sit down. I'm going to sit down and I'm going to read this again. And I'm going to do something that the apostle Paul did is I'm going to I'm going to unplug uh, my feelings, my emotions, my uh, my everything, 
out of it. So you can clearly see this is not just Pastor Poe or another preacher saying something. But this is really God's intent. Now, if you receive this, I promise you, you'll never be in bondage to anything ever again. Amen. Now, listen to this again. Why is God providing us with this, this grace, this free gift? He says, but God, verse four, but God so rich in his mercy because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful, look at this folks, and intense love. God doesn't just love us. He has an intense love. Intense love. He granted us this mercy which deliver us from the penalties of our own sin because of his intense love. Not just love, intense love. He says, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union. Why is this now? With Christ. What you have to do with that? Absolutely nothing. You were going the other way. Christ came to you while you were going the other way. While, while you were thinking the other way, while you were planning, plotting, strategizing, to do other things and serve another God, the Father sent Christ. This is why you weren't thinking about God, you weren't thinking about church. If you had a Bible, you weren't reading it. And if you went to church, you were only there because somebody told you you needed to go. Amen. And I'm not talking about you, man, I'm talking about me. I'm talking about me. I like the way the King James says it too. It says in verse five, even when we were dead in sin, man, we were dead, we just didn't know it. He says, hath quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved. By grace you are saved. The Amplified, he says, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. Watch this now. He gave us the very life of Christ himself. That's what it really means to be saved by grace. It's no longer your life renovated. It's a new life Amen. in Christ. Y'all know the difference between a new car and a renovated car? Amen. A restored car? You know, the restored car, they go in, they take what is, they kind of take some of the bad parts out, but it's not a new car. They take the engine, they may even rebuild it, put new parts in the block and scrape it off, clean it up, but it's not new. We somehow have tried, have cheapened salvation by thinking God is renovating us. It's not what it says. Another scripture says, old things have passed away. Behold, all things become, become new. Why? Why, why is he so intent on us identifying with Christ in this new life? versus us and how we made good decisions versus the bad decisions in the old life. Now we make good decisions. That doesn't make you a new person. 
that makes you a, an old person making new decisions. And that means you just one bad decision away from backsliding. Come on, listen to what I'm saying. Because of this mindset that we have of God is only going to be good to us when we're good, we can't really accept grace. We keep thinking, we keep trying to figure out what is it we got to do? Ain't nothing you can do. Because for sure there was nothing you could do to get born again. I says now. He says, verse 5, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings, trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship with, in union with Christ. He gave us the very, watch this now, life of Christ. The same new life with which he quickened him. For it is by grace, his favor and mercy, which you did not deserve, that you were saved, delivered, from judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. So it's Christ's salvation. Look at your names. It's not even yours. <laughs> and he raised us up together with him. Look at this. And made us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly sphere by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the anointed one. Now, I like the example. Let me see that in handkerchief, Alex. I like the example Pastor Dolly used that illustrates being in Christ. You know, this is, this is the word of God. It represents Christ, right? This represents you. When I put this in there and I close the book up, I'm in Christ. Amen. You're in Christ. Wherever Christ go, you go. Once you're in Christ, you in. Once you're in Christ, you in. See, if you really grasp what I'm saying, it changes everything. Amen. The scripture that says, Jesus said, behold, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And he talks about nothing can by any means hurt you. Isn't that what it says? Yes. Where is that? Luke chapter, chapter 10. Well, how is that possible? Because you're in Christ. Can Satan hurt Christ? He's already been defeated. But you think he can hurt you. He can't hurt you if you're in Christ. Go to uh, second, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay. How many of you would agree with me that the Apostle Paul was a great preacher? I mean, just an eloquent teacher. Powerful man of God. Where well, there came a point where he wanted to demonstrate to those that were listening that their deliverance wasn't based on him, but based on Christ. 
And so this passage of scripture very eloquently illustrates that. And that's why I'm sitting down. And that's why I'm telling you the story from this perspective. Because I don't, if you're not, you know, you can get temporary results from assumptions. Right? I mean, it look like you really know something and doing something. But if it's not the truth, then eventually you're going to go right back. And you're going to succumb to the pressures of this life. Now, listen to what Paul says. Verse 1. And our brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellence of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Now, why is, why is the apostle Paul, who was the most learned and educated apostle and teacher of that day, came to a place where he said, you know what? I'm telling them things, but they're not really quite getting it. I mean, think about Romans chapter six. He's teaching the Romans about grace and they, they got it wrong. Just like many people today getting it wrong. Grace is, oh man, now that grace has come, I can just do whatever. So just like the apostle Paul had to come to a place and say, okay, guys, sit down and listen. Let's take the fluff out. Let, let's take the emotion out. Let, let's take the, the skill of the orator out. And let's, let's, let's look for real at what the word of God is saying. Not what Pastor Poe is saying the word of God is saying, but what the word of God is saying. Paul said it this way because he began to realize that there were, I believe, because there were people that were becoming convinced because of his ability to convince people. And the next couple of verses really illustrate the power of grace. And, and what that means is it's totally not about you. It's so not about me. You're not going to get it because I'm a great preacher of it. Or someone else. Pick your favorite preacher. Mm -mm. Listen to what he says. Verse 2, he said, for I determined not to know anything amongst you. Save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. Look at verse four. And my preaching, my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and the power. Read verse five with me that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now listen, why is it there's something free given to us that we're having a hard time receiving? Because we just simply don't believe it can be that good. We don't believe God is willing to be that good to us. So then preachers go about the, the uphill challenge of convincing us. Yes, he is that good. Oh, if I could just get you to see how good he is. So Paul came to this place where he says, guys, this is good because God is good. So, Look at verse 11. He said, for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man but the spirit of God. 
Now we have received not the spirit of the world. That's, that's what used to influence us. That's what used to direct us. He said, but the spirit, which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely. Everybody say free. free. Freely given to us of God. The Amplified in verse 12 says, now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor in that grace and blessings so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. He says in, in the Amplified, King James again, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. So let me submit this to you. Go back to Ephesians. The only way we can really receive this free gift called grace is exactly how he says, we receive this grace through faith. That is not something of us. That is not something we learn. That is something given to us by God. Romans chapter 12 says, but God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. We have this measure of faith so that we can live by grace. God. Now, when you get saved by grace, you know, you know, it doesn't just, that's not just going to heaven. We get salvation by grace. We get healing by grace, right? right. We got prosperity, financial prosperity by grace, but how do we receive it? By faith. All right, let me read it. Let me read it to you. Verse eight. He says, Ephesians chapter two, verse eight, for by grace are you saved through faith. And look what it says. And that not of yourselves, it is a what? Yeah. All right, now listen to this in the Amplified. For it is by free grace. Everybody say free. Free, free is free, right? Amen. So you don't get grace because you come to church every service. Because you're in five departments in the church. Right? No, we, 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 you, don't get, you don't get grace because you're a tither and you've given a substantial offering. That's not what it says. Free. Everybody say free. free. Well, if it's free and God gave it, how come you don't have it? If it's free and God has already given it, why aren't you experiencing all that grace entails right now every day? Because you appropriate it through faith. You lack the faith. It's, it's almost like without faith, you can't believe God can be this good. Because man could, it's impossible for man to be this good. You ain't even this good. He says, for it is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. There it is again. Through your faith, 
And this salvation, watch this now, is not of yourselves, of your own doing. It came not through your own striving. How many people we know, say folk, always striving. Always, you know, I didn't pray enough. Maybe this happened because I didn't, I, I wasn't serving enough. Maybe, maybe my financial breakthrough hadn't happened because I didn't give enough. Maybe my healing hadn't taken hold yet because I'm not studying enough. That's not grace. That's works. You ever felt, and I know you have, so I don't want you to raise your hand, but you ever felt unworthy because of something you did to receive God's goodness because of something you didn't do? Yeah, we all have. That's why this message of grace is so important. We can't make it happen. It's already happened. How can you make something happen again that you couldn't get to happen the first time? Already happened. Everything, let, let me put it this way. We all believe when it says, by grace are you saved through faith, that 2,000 years ago, Jesus died for our sins, therefore I'm saved, right? By me believing that. Well, you know what? It also means that 2,000 years ago, that you were healed. Amen. Amen. Totally, completely. Amen. And it's not like a, it's not like a gradual thing, like, okay, um, you're gonna be, you're gonna be healed after you saved after 2,000 years, after 3,000, after 4,000 years, then Jesus is gonna come and take care of healing. And then after 6,000 years, he's gonna take care of financial prosperity. It all happened 2,000 years ago. Are you with me? Or well, you think I ought to be doing more? Some of y'all right now are saying, why don't he put more into it? Why, 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 don't, he, why don't he get is he tired or something? That's what Paul stopped. He said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You guys getting the wrong picture of this thing. This, this is not, this is not going to happen for you because I convinced you. But then your faith is not in, it's not in the demonstration of the power of God. It's in the eloquence of my speaking. You know what that means? That means somebody else more eloquent can come along and talk you right out of it. It's for you, not about you. He says, for it is by free grace, verse eight again and Amplified, God's unmerited favor that you are saved, delivered from judgment, may partake us of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourselves, of your own doing, it came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Not because of works, not the fulfilling of the law's demands, least any man should boast. It is not the results of what anyone can possibly do. So no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. Just receive it. Just receive it. Romans chapter 12, turn over there. 
and I'm going to stop right here. Preach me into belief. Nope. Because then when the temptation and the trials come, you're going to need somebody to do it all over again. Well, I'll keep me a MP3 player. And, and so I'll, I'll, I'll stir myself up with Pastor Poe teaching it when he was stirred up. You know, grace is not going to manifest because you excited and stirred up. Why? Because it's already happened. It's already happened. I want you to start acting and, and behaving like you know it's already happened. Everything that God has for you and I, he's already done it. Amen. He knows what your needs are before you pray. You ever read that? So why would he wait until you pray to meet him? Jesus was sent. And it's through Christ that we have an opportunity to receive all that the Father desires for us to have. Not by us. He says here, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your living, your body as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Why? That you may prove what is a good and acceptable and perfect will of God. For I say through the, what? Grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. What measure? The measure to receive this free grace. Amen. Look at verse 3 in the Amplified. He said, for by, by the grace, unmerited favor of God given to me, I warn everyone among you not to estimate and think of himself more highly than he ought, not to have an exaggerated opinion of his own importance, but to rate his ability with sober judgment, each according to the degree of faith apportioned by God to him. Amen. Ephesians chapter one. Did I say that was the last one? Uh, then I'm going to add one. <laughs> All right. Everything that God desires for you and I to have, he's already done it. Grace is God's power to produce in our lives everything that we need. Faith, your faith, look at your neighbor and say, your faith, your faith is how you get it working in your life. Hebrews 11 and 1 says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We have hope, which is a confident expectation of good which is grace. We, we can identify it. What is it is grace that's going to bring to pass the promises of God? It's faith that causes me to receive it right now. Verse three, bless, mm, boy, it's all good, but blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath, past tense, blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. Where are you? In Christ. So in Christ is what? All spiritual blessings. Everything. Everything. Bills paid, peace in the house, 
children saved, how to love my wife, how to love my husband, how to prosper on my job is all in Christ. How to be forgiven. How to be healed. I'm in Christ. I'm going to read that again. Are you listening to me? Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Now the Amplified says, may grace, God's unmerited favor and spiritual peace, spiritual peace. Look at your neighbors and you need some of that. You need some of that. Spiritual peace. That is a superior level of peace. That is the same peace that Jesus operated with in the earth as an example of how you and I should live in the earth. You know what he called it? Peace that passes all understanding. You don't understand why you got so much peace. When all hell is breaking loose all around you, but you got this peace. Why? Because you have this grace that your faith has appropriated for you. I said I wasn't going to get excited. <laughs> oh, man. understanding you know how long some of y'all been trying to stay saved how you gonna try to be something you already are that's like trying to stay black <laughs> trying to stay white you know I'm just using old word loosely trying to stay female trying to stay male we struggle when there's no point in the struggle. <laughs> God loves you so much. He loves us so much. He loves us so much that he's saying, okay, I'm just going to do it all. And all I need you to do is believe it. Yeah. Didn't he say all things are possible to them that? So we don't, listen to me, people, please. We don't have it because we don't believe it. We keep trying to figure something out. There ain't nothing to figure out. And even if your little pea brain figured it out, <laughs> what you figured out gonna mess it up. Cause the next time you're gonna try to figure it out again and it ain't gonna be the same way. Now you're living by experience, not by faith. Right. Okay. He says, I'm just reading the Amplified verse, uh, th verse four. Even as in his love, in his love, 
he chose us. Actually picked us out for himself as his own. In Christ. There we are. Where were we? In we were in Christ before the foundation of the world. You see that, right? Yeah. So when we get born again, the whole objective of the whole thing is to get us back where he had us before the world messed us up. In Christ before the foundation of the world. Why? That we should be holy, consecrated, set apart for him and blameless in his sight even above reproach before him in love. Look, your neighbor say, you're above reproach. You know, what, you know what legalism and laws and religion does? It brings reproach. It, it just constantly beats you up and tell you, you ain't, you're not enough. You're not good enough. You didn't pray enough. You, you know, you, 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 you didn't read your Bible enough and you know, you're not holy enough and you, you, no, it's you, you, you this, you that, you. And I'm telling you, grace says it ain't about you. Right. Now get this, for he, for he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us. He did, not, not you. You ain't even love God. You ain't know God in your humanity. You were doing your own thing. He was planning because of his love the life he chose for you. To be adopted, revealed at his own, as his own children through Jesus Christ in according to accordance with the, with the purpose of his will because it pleased him and was his kind intent so that we might be to the praise and the commendation of his glorious grace, favor, and mercy, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. Amen. All right, so here's what I want you to do. I want you to close your eyes. Everybody, just close your eyes. I'm through teaching you. Close your eyes. And I want you to imagine God's goodness. Imagine God being good to you. Get an image of that. What does that look like to you? You say, well, I don't feel worthy. Well, you're already worthy. You're in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Imagine what are you willing to believe that God would do for you if you had never sinned? What do you think God's willing to do for you if you had never sinned? Things a little better. Imagine what God, what you believe God can do with you if you've never sinned. Looks pretty good, doesn't it? Well, that's what grace has already produced. Because from God's perspective, because you're in Christ, sin has no place 
in his determination of what he's willing to do for you. Notice the scripture we read where it said God loves you with an intense love. I, uh, I really, I really can't describe. I, I, uh, I know, I know his love, but when it talks about his intense love, that's love on a level that we just gotta receive it, not try to figure it out. But that's what he says he has for you, every one of you, intense love. That's what grace through faith produces. There's no condemnation there. There's no guilt. There's no shame there. There's no feelings of inadequacy there. Just peace and approval. It's the knowledge of, it's the knowing that God is pleased with you. Now, open your eyes and look this way. Can you guys accept that? Yes. You know how much time you have wasted trying to be righteous when you're already righteous? through Jesus. For some of us, will you stand to your feet? For some of us, salvation because of religion has become a burden. But what did Jesus say? Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden. Take my yoke upon you. For my burdens are what? Easy. My yoke is easy in my... So why are you still feeling heavy? Because you hadn't done that. You just haven't done it. You say, well, Pastor Pope, I don't know if I can be that free. I mean, if I'm really free, I might, I might go back to doing stuff I used to do. Yeah, you might. But that has nothing to do with his intense love. You might. Here's what we know. Feelings of guilt, shame is not going to keep you from going back either. Feeling condemned? They ain't never stopped nobody from sinning. Am I right? I'm trying to show you that this love that God has for you can't be interfered with by you. It's already done. He already decided. I love you. I love you. I love you so much that I'm going to send Jesus, my son, and he's going to die just for you. But because I love you with an intense love, I'm going to save you 
from hell, from yourself, from sickness and disease. I'm going to save you from poverty and lack. I'm going to save you completely. All I want you to do is receive it. Oh, but pastor, it don't look like it. And that's what faith is for. Faith is how you appropriate this grace. You getting it? Yes. Father, we love you today. We thank you, Father, for pouring your grace out on us. <laughs> Grace is Jesus. We thank you, Lord, that when we sinned, you didn't look the other way, but you got involved. You got intimately involved to the point where you had Jesus pay the sin debt for us. Thank you. And Lord, forgive us for trying to work out our own salvation. <laughs> Today, we leave here as free men and women. Knowing that Jesus has made us free. knowing that we don't have to strive anymore. So now we do the things we do in your body and in your kingdom because we love you. Yes. Not because there's a law that demands that we do it that way. We're faithful to our husband. We're faithful to our wife. Not because some law says we should, but because we love you. We're going to love our children, not because they're good, not because they're obedient, but because you first loved us. We're not going to worry about our finances and we're not going to fret over things that appear to be lack because we know that as your children you will take care of us. So we're going to do exactly what your word says. We're going to count it all joy in the midst of tribulation. We're going to come to church. And we're going to fellowship and we're going to serve the church because that's your body. Yes. And if we've been graced to sing, we're going to sing. We've been graced to clean the building. We're going to clean the building. We've been graced to park the cars. We're going to park the cars. We've been graced to teach. We're going to teach. But not in our own strength. but we're going to do it by your spirit. Yes. And then Lord, we don't need the glory now. We, we're just going to step back and watch how, what the glory do. Yes. <laughs> we're going to watch men get set free and women get set free and children get set free. And our greatest joy is going to come from the joy of the Lord we see on their faces and in their words. We're going to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Will you give the Lord some praise? <laughs>